I'm looking forward to this game, but yeah, I think it's going to no. be a Niner blowout. I do. I think the Niners are quite a bit better than Seattle. I really do. Due to injury, um, due to just overall personnel, or yeah, I mean the Niners have beaten Seattle a ton. Um, Gino is, you know, it was Russell Wilson who had ownage on on the Niners. It wasn't Seattle. It was Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is the guy that was eighteen and four against the 49ers. It's not Seattle. So Gino's zero and three against the Niners, and. Um, he doesn't give them problems. I think the Niners are going to win this game convincingly. I really do. I, and now we'll see. I mean, Brock Purdy's playing really, really well. Uh, the one thing about Seattle is they do have this incredible rookie corner, Devin Witherspoon from Illinois, who is looking incredible. Both Debo and Ayuk boop, yesterday in the locker room. Uh, <laughs> Stop whopping me. <laughs> we had to put that to bed because you could not form a coherent sentence if we kept doing it. Totally. Boop. Uh, but anyway, th- those guys both mentioned how Witherspoon is really, really good. And he does. He jumps off the film. He's one of the best rookie corners we've seen in the league in a while. Uh, you got Tariq, Withers- uh, Tariq Woolen on the other end, on the other um, corner. They call him Reek. And he's a gigantic corner with long arms. And they have the ability to man up on and play man-to-man against Debo and IU can take those guys away. But look closer into this matchup and you'll see – Seahawks are thoroughly average. I mean, they really are. Uh, they've lost two of their past three games. The Niners are seven point favorites on the road, uh, but Seattle's mediocre. They're six and four. Uh, they're, they've got a they're minus two on point differential. The Niners are plus one twenty two. I think. So I mean, that's yeah. you know, it's a it's two teams going in different directions. Seattle's good enough to beat. I mean, they're four and one at home. So and their place is loud. Right. You know, everybody knows. How hard it is to be to uh, play there, um, but I just I to me it you know and the, and the running back the rookie running back that they have from uh, from UCLA uh, whose name eludes me but uh, you know with Kenneth Kenneth Walker down their their rookie running back is is good and they use him on screen passes a ton yeah and the Niners have struggled to stop the screen so I mean that's going to be a, a factor can the Niners defend the screen pass but as long as the Niners are even reasonable against the screen pass. Um, I, I like the Niners to win to win by fourteen. Yeah, to comfortable seven. in the spread, yeah, six fourteen and a half to seven. seven. So yeah, I'm thinking they're going to win by fourteen to seventeen points. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, that's the run, the rookie yeah, running back, exactly. Who's a hell of a back, right? And he, you know, and he runs super hard, but he runs upright. And he and the Niners, you know, probably going to you know Greenlaw and Warner are going to deal out a bunch of big hits on him. So I, I definitely like the 49ers to uh, to win this game, and I I'm I'm eager to see if Brock Purdy can can keep it going. I mean, the last two weeks, Brock Purdy has played incredible football. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, near perfect football. In perfect football last week, if you want to look at quarterback rating, which I find it uh, a little bit surprising that you can have a perfect quarterback rating while not having a quote unquote perfect game, but that's the nature of QB rating as it relates to the statistical reality of the way they compute it. Yeah, I mean, Brock's playing great. Um, And he's just, you know, he had the turnover. It's funny, people reacted so strongly to those fourth quarter turnovers. And, um, you know, Shanahan basically said, hey, you know, I didn't consider making a change because when I watched the film of those games where he supposedly played bad or poorly, it really was just though it was those isolated turnovers in the fourth quarter. I mean, right. obviously you can't have that, right? You can't be turning the ball over four times in back to back fourth quarters and win games in the NFL. But he still, I mean, against Minnesota, I think he'd completed like eighty five percent of his passes going to the fourth quarter. That Cincinnati game, Brock Purdy was probably the best forty yeah. nine er on the field. Minnesota, um, I thought he was a little bit shaky, uh, to be honest. Early in that game, didn't really, and you know they had a hard time moving the ball. Offensively, they struggled. The pass game was not as electric as it had been. And Cincinnati, you know, they trailed for so much of that game in the second half that I think that he was put into a spot where the offense is not comfortable to begin with. He was running for his life in the Cincinnati game. The The, the Cincinnati game was about the 49er defense just was dragging. I mean, right. Joe Burrow did anything he wanted in that game. They wanted to run it to Mixon. They ran it to Mixon. They averaged 5-4 a carry. They wanted to throw it short. It was open all day. They wanted to throw a screen pass or two. The, the Niners were nowhere close to making the tackle on any of those plays. So to me, you know, 
what's happened to Cincinnati since that game is really dramatic. I, I, I thought Cincinnati looked like a Super Bowl, a viable Super Bowl contender coming out of that game. Um, and now they're Joe Burrow's done for the year, and they're, right. they're probably done for the year. Yeah, no doubt. And they're in a spot where, you know, without a quarterback in that division, and they're already staring up at Cleveland and Baltimore and Pittsburgh, they're, they're going to be in a tough spot. Brian Baldinger joined the morning roast earlier today, and he talked about what problems Seattle could possibly pose for the Niners. Take a listen. Well, I mean, there's DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I mean, that's a problem. Because I don't care how well you rush the passer or how well you cover, both those guys are capable of making sensational plays. They just are. DK's been hot the last couple of weeks. And he he can just change the game on one play. So that's a problem. And then defensively, like this Boye Mafe going into last week, I haven't watched the game yet against the Rams. I'm going to watch it this afternoon. But, um, you know, he had seven straight games with a sack. Some of these young guys, like this Devin Witherspoon, yeah. is a problem. Yeah, Like this guy, he hits the way Ronnie Lott hit. Wow. Like this guy is a game-changing corner. And he, I mean, he, he doesn't, he's just an amazing, like he's got a big smile on his face, but that kid loves football and he loves to hit. And so Bobby Wagner is just as smart as they come. He knows this offense. You know, he knows this division. So, you know, you've, you've got a division game in they, they took the 49ers to the brink in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It took a great play by Amenahu to get the ball out of Geno Smith's hands mm-hmm. right in the, the, when the game was in the balance to change the game. And that might take that on Thursday night. Echoing some of the things that you're saying, that's Brian Baldinger from yesterday on with the morning roast and talking about the secondary matchups and DK Metcalf. And outside of that, I, I do think that if, if the Niners can protect Brock Purdy, I don't know if Seattle has enough defensively to stop the myriad of weapons that the Niners can employ. Yeah, I mean, and, and I love Baldy, but I, Devin Witherspoon is not Ronnie Lott. Right. I mean, I mean we let's not oh, go crazy on the hitting. Ronnie Lott was Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott was in his own category. And no one nowadays hitter. can hit like Ronnie Lott used to hit. Right. I mean, we had we had uh, Icky Woods on the Bengal pregame with Lowe because he knows him, right? And I asked him about that hit in the Super Bowl, Whoop. and he was just like, you know, yeah, Ronnie got me. <laughs> Ronnie got yeah. me. Um, and it was a monster hit right in the mouth. And I don't think Icky ran the same way after that. But but he's right about, um, Baldy's right about Boye Mafe. That, you know, Boye Mafe is a defensive end, played at Minnesota. And, like, if you look at that bo- box score against the Rams, he had no tackles. But, man, he he, he comes flying off the edge. He's just an incredible shape. And the 49ers' big problem in this game is their offensive line. Um, Trent Williams is going to be there at left tackle. But we don't know about the per, pretty much the rest of the line. I mean, Brendel's probably going to start at center. They're hoping that Aaron Banks can start at left guard. Right. And if so, you know, he's got turf toe. Um, but, they, you know, he's been out a few weeks now. If he can go at left guard, then Feliciano jumps from left guard over to Burford's right guard spot. Burford is not going to be able to go. Shanahan said yesterday that if the game were Sunday, Burford would be able to go. Right. But the fact that it's tomorrow, um, he's not going to be able to go. So if Banks can play left guard, Feliciano, who's been really good, can play right guard. And then McKivitz um, right. is going to, even though he's not 100%, he's got a knee and an ankle and he's kind of limping around. He'll play that right tackle spot. But if Banks, for whatever reason, can't go, then Feliciano plays left guard. And then it's like Shanahan was asked, who's going to play right guard then? And it's like, I don't know. You know, we'll see. You know, and they, they signed a guy named Ben Barch off Jacksonville's practice squad. They could use Jalen Moore. Right. They, I mean, there's like nine different guys that they potentially could go with. A bunch of practice squad guys, Corey Luciano, uh, Jesse Davis. They, they, they've got six or seven different options there. I would guess it will be Jalen Moore at right guard if, uh, if Banks doesn't go and Feliciano stays at left guard, uh, but it won't be Burford. Right. So, and does Jalen Moore have the skill set necessary? And in this offense, a lot of offensive line movement in terms of, you know, the zone read and, you know, the, the stretch game, you have to be able to be mobile. Can Jalen Moore be that mobile at guard to make this run offense still work? I think so. I think so. I think Jalen Moore is a lot more, run, a very underrated player. And he could, on many teams, he would be playing a more significant role than he's played thus far. He's ready to go. Um, you know, he's a veteran. He's been in this offense for years. 
Um, Shanahan says he can play left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard. I mean, they feel they feel pretty good about their depth. So, but they, you know, th- this is kind of their weak spot. You know, it's like their offense. I mean, this is really what makes the Purdy story so amazing. The guy's number one in like seventeen different categories, right. but the Niners' offensive line is like twenty eighth in the NFL in offensive line pass block win rate, which is kind of like the preeminent. O line stat. Right. So, so how is that that he's able to be so effective with a, an offensive line that's not winning? Is it the quick pass game? Is it him being able to buy time, stand in to make throws, or all the above? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of everything. The guy's the guy. He he processes what he sees. He throws really well with anticipation. Um, so he knows where he's going to go. The ball's coming out pretty quickly. Um, he also has a little bit more mobility than you think. I mean, in the Cincinnati game, he was running for his life, but he was running effectively. So um, I think it's a little bit of everything. It's a Niners have a strong run game. They got a lot of weapons that they can throw to within five to ten yards of the line of scrimmage, and uh, it's just a, they've got a group. They got a nice group of of, uh, of 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 talent. I mean, I would I think Debo could go off in this game. Um, it seems like he's a, a a a prime time kind of a player, and I think he said the other day that he hadn't played in Seattle in a couple of years, but I would expect him to to have a significant performance. Also, when you look at the Niners, you know, the one thing about the NFL is that teams do a, have a tendency to kind of distribute the the touches in the Sunday, Thursday quick turnarounds to the guys who didn't touch it a lot on Sunday. So if you didn't get the ball, if you weren't pr- you know prominent in the game plan Sunday, you're oftentimes prominent in the game plan Thursday. Right. Um, and that'd so, be Debo then. And that right? would be Debo. Yeah. So, and then Kittle, you know, Kittle's quietly having a, a you know, a Pro Bowl caliber yeah. year. I don't think people seem to realize that. I mean, a lot of people are kind of down on Kittle. Um, you know, it seems like people are like, oh, well, Kittle's been a disappointment. No, no, Kittle has not been a disappointment. Kittle's been really, really good. So, you know, they come into this game. The Niners have, have it's like they've got two modes, Dibs, and you know from watching them. You were in camp this summer, and, and you know from just years of watching them. Under Shanahan, they've played at like one level pre buy, and then the bye week comes, and they got so many kind of premier guys that they just kind of know, like, hey, you know what? It's time to get serious, you know, get into the playbook. Um, not The real problem with the 49ers offense in the three games that they lost was not Brock Purdy's fourth quarter turnovers. It was the fact that they were committing all these turno- all these uh, penalties, penalties yeah, on no first doubt. down and no second doubt. down. They're getting into... Behind the sticks. Yeah, they're and, find, yeah. falling behind the sticks and asking the quarterback to do too much. And they're not built to be a three-wide and four-wide team. We've talked about it before.